Dr. Mike here. In this video, we're going to look at the aortic branches. What is the aorta? The aorta is that large vessel that exits from the left-hand side of the heart, that left ventricle. Now, as you can see, from the left ventricle, we've got the aortic trunk. And coming out of the aortic trunk, there's a number of different branches. We've got one branch here, one branch here, and one branch here. Let's have a look at these branches before the aorta descends down through the diaphragm into our abdomen. These three branches are, this first branch here is what we term the brachiocephalic. The brachiocephalic. Now the reason why it's called the brachiocephalic, there's two words here, brachio, which means arm, and cephalic, which means head. So this blood vessel is going to go and feed the head and the arm. How does it do it? Well, from this branch, you've got one that descends down this way, and one that goes up this way that we turn the common carotid. So let's label this one common carotid. In actual fact, it's going to be the right common carotid. What's this? Well, this is called the right subclavian. Now it's called the subclavian, sub meaning below, clavian is referring to the clavicle, because what we've got here is the clavicle and it goes behind the clavicle, okay? Now, moving a little bit to the left, we've got a branch of the aorta here and this is going to be the left common carotid. So we've got the right common carotid there, we've got the left common carotid here, And because they're common carotids, they're going to branch off and give smaller branches. And these smaller branches include the internal and external carotids. What's important about the internal and external? Well, it's pretty easy, first of all, is that the one in the middle, they're internal. The ones on the outside, they're the external carotids. What's important? The internal carotids, they supply 80 to 85% of the brain's blood, okay? The brain gets 80 to 85% of its blood from the internal carotids, not the external. The external gives blood to the face and neck, okay? Now, what we're moving on to here is what we call the left subclavian, which means its sister is the right subclavian over here. We're gonna have the clavicle that it moves behind. And let's write it up. This is the left subclavian. Now, once it's gone underneath the clavicle and it's into our arm, our upper arm, it is called the brachial. So we're gonna have the left and right brachial. I'll just write it up here, left brachial. And this is that blood vessel that we often do a manual blood pressure reading from. Okay, the brachial artery. Now. There's a couple more branches for the subclavian. I'll just very quickly say two that are clinically important. They're gonna branch off, right? And when they branch off, let's branch it off over here so we don't get in the road. These two branches, I want you to think about this. Remember, this is the forearm, uh, sorry, this is at the top of the arm here, and this is going down towards the forearm, and it branches off. You have the anatomical position with the thumbs facing most laterally, and if your thumbs can turn in a circle, that means it's turning in a radius. So the radial artery is the most lateral, and the ulna is the most medial. So that means we have the radial artery here, right radial, and this is gonna be right ulna, okay? Why is this important? Because you can take a pulse from the right radial, common, radial commonly, it's quite easy to do. All right, now let's continue with the aorta. Now the aorta is going down, there's gonna be a couple of branches that are gonna feed the esophagus, feed various particular areas, but it doesn't matter, we're going down, we go through the diaphragm, okay? So we're going through the diaphragm, and as we go down through the diaphragm, there is a very quick, or I should say immediate branch that comes off, which is called the celiac trunk. Now this is the, like I said, the celiac trunk, and the celiac trunk has three branches that come off, which I've done a video on, okay? These branches are gonna feed the liver, the stomach, the spleen, the pancreas, the lowest part of the small, uh, the lowest part of the esophagus, and a very minor part of the small intestines. That's what the celiac trunk does. Now, below the celiac trunk, we've got another branch called the superior mesenteric that comes off, and the superior mesenteric
the superior mesenteric artery, that's going to give blood to most of the small intestines, a little bit of the large intestines. Now, basically nearly either side of this, you're gonna have a paired artery coming out, and that's gonna be the renal artery that's gonna give blood flow to the kidneys. The paired renal arteries. Then below that, we're gonna have the inferior mesenteric artery, and the inferior mesenteric artery is going to give blood to the rest of the large intestines, rectum up to anus. Inferior mesenteric. Then as we go even further down, we're going towards the legs now. What we get is some branching off and now what we're getting is the common iliac arteries, left and right. Common iliac And they're going to have various branches to them, which is going to include the femoral artery. Now, these are the major branches of the aorta, okay? We've got the left ventricle pushing up the aortic arch, which is three main branches up the top. Then it goes down into the abdomen with celiac trunk, superior mesenteric, renal arteries, inferior mesenteric, and then branching for the common iliac as we go into our pelvis and legs. So these are the most common branches of the aorta.